Hello everyone, welcome to Crimson Guitars in association with the Dorset Guitar Museum and the Great Guitar Giveaway. This is a full on refret video. I'm going to take you through from beginning to end on exactly how to refret a guitar. Very concise, very detailed video. Um, before I do that, I'll introduce you to the guitar. Uh, this is her. It's a early 70s Gibson SG and it is wicked. Sounds gorgeous. I have no idea what the pickups are. Hopefully I'll find out unless I forget, which I probably will. And it's got really low frets. They're like half a mil, which is way too low. We want like a mil and a half. What else have we got here? We've got some slightly funny stuff going on. So uh, non-original Bigsby. We've got a couple of wiring issues. We've got neck issues, big neck issues. We've got cracks down here. We've got some screws, which have obviously been hidden by plugs. So this guitar has had a life and a half. Um, nitro finish, obviously, early 70s, 72, I think. Um, we also have volley on the back of the headstock, which is probably why the headstock is still intact and the neck is not, or was not. What else to say about this guy? Really thin neck. It's got like a 40 mil, 40 mil nut. It's gonna need a new nut as well, by the way. I'll have to cut that because obviously that's part of the thing when the frets are that low. The nut will have been cut down, 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 down. When I put the new frets in, those slots will be too low. So there's a lot of work to do on this guitar, but this vid is a refret. Watch this video if you want to know how to refret. There's one more thing I want to show you before we get on with it, and that is this case. I really like how they've made the handle out of an old power cable. I love that. Um, it's probably comfier than the original handle, to be perfectly honest. Um, anyway, enough of that. Let's get on with it. So, starting from the top, I've got a couple of sanding beams. One's got 320 on it, one's got 240 on it. I've got my notch straight edge. I've got a fret rocker. I've got some fret wire radiusing tool. I've got my fret hammer. Fret tang nips. This guitar has... Uh, binding, so we're going to need that. I've got my fret end file. Talking of files, I've got my lovely fine crowning file, I've got my triangular file, and I've got my fret finishing or fret end file. Obviously got my fret wire, my usual sharpie and tape and some medium viscosity super glue. I'm going to use super glue today. And also I have a bunch of radius checkers. And last but not least, I have my fret press with the corresponding call inside of it. So that is everything that you're going to need to do this refret. Okay, so stage one is removing the frets. Now for this we're going to need two tools which I neglected to mention. We're going to need a soldering iron and we're going to use one of these Hosco fret slot cleaners and obviously some fret pulls, which I think I did mention. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the strings off the guitar and then we're going to very gently heat each fret individually with the hot soldering iron. We're not staying in one place too long. We don't want to burn anything. So we're going to just gently move the soldering iron over the fret for about 10 to 15 seconds. And then we're going to take our fret pulls and we're going to try and grab the end of each fret and just slowly lift that. Now, I don't want you to tip this way or that because you will put marks in the fretboard. On this particular fretboard, we're going to be doing a bit of sanding anyway, but just try to get in the habit of not tilting this way. You can tilt this way because these have rounded over edges. So let's get started on that.
Okay, so those frets have all been pulled. I think what worked really well there was pulling the first end of the fret out with the fret cutters and then working along with the fret pulls. I think just because the fret pulls aren't as sharp, they're not able to get as much purchase, but just the very, very first lift. And also just to let you know why we're using soldering iron, not only does it melt any glue that's inside, but it also softens the wood, so it's far less brittle. So when you're pulling those barbs out, you just don't see the tear out that you'd see if you weren't heating those frets up. Okay, so stage two. We're now going to prepare the fretboard and clean the fret slots. I'm gonna use a leveling beam with 240 grit. I'm gonna run up and down, staying parallel to the center line so we keep that radius. I'm basically just aiming to clean this fretboard up, um, take away any snags that might have happened when I'm pulling the frets out. Obviously, we can't do this on a maple fretboard that's been finished. We've got a rosewood here, it's just a whole, it's a whole nother thing. That's a whole nother video. Once I have sanded back and I'm happy with my finish, um, probably will pop the nut out at this point as well. We're gonna be cutting a new nut. For obvious reasons, the nut slots are now too low because those frets were so teeny, they've been taken down and down and down over the years, so we will be cutting a new nut. But once we've sanded the fretboard, we'll then be cleaning out these fret slots and checking our depths, which will take me to the third tool that I've forgotten to mention, which is a um, depth checker. Considering that we are sanding the fretboard, we are definitely gonna to wanna to cover up the electronics. The way I'm gonna do this is with a paper towel, I'm gonna to pop that over the electronics and then I'm gonna use my masking tape to stick that on. But, but, this is an old guitar, this is a nitro finish. We really want to use as little tape on the body as possible. So just make sure that you're using the minimal amount that is gonna protect your electronics but also use low tack tape. And if you don't have low tack tape, then low tack it on your tummy. Thusly, you're just gonna rip a bit off and just a couple of goes over on your jumper, it's now low tack. That'll prevent any nitro coming off your guitar. I think that's all there is to say, so let's just get on with it. So from that first pass, I can see our low spots. We, do, we want to flatten it, but keep the radius. So low spots like this, we're going, to have to, we're going to have to sort out. I want to avoid using a radius block on here. I want to just roll with what's already there, which if I stay even in my strokes, I should be able to do. So we'll keep going. I might end up going to a 120 for this initial pass. We'll see. Now 
Now one thing you need to be really careful of is this binding here is awful thin, but we do really want to clear out those corners. So you just oh, gonna have to be extremely careful. Now Hosco do make a um, fret slot cleaner that is specifically for binding channels. Sorry, for fret slots with binding. A student is currently using ours and honestly I can't be bothered to go upstairs and persuade Sam to give me one from the shop. So I'm just gonna make do with what I've got. I'm all about I'm all about making do. I don't like fuss. Ideally, I'd have like three tools in my toolkit. I've got children. There's enough fuss in my life without bringing it to work. The other thing is, if any of you guys ever want to either breed more of me with my DNA or figure out a way of permanently vanquishing me from the planet by creating some kind of anti anti Josh with my DNA. You'll find my DNA over most fretboards. Um, as you might have noticed from this video, I keep accidentally spitting when I blow out the fret <coughs> slots. So to much to Sophia's disgust, there's probably quite a lot of saliva on this fretboard. Sorry to the owner of this guitar. Talking of saliva, I'm going to tell this story and hope that uh, Sophia hears it because I want to see what it does to her. I was playing a gig once and our lead singer had something awful happen to him. It was a really mucky club, like all the kit was really gross and the microphones were just like, you could see like inside the little cages, they were like just clagged up with basically years worth of spit. This is what made me think of it, saliva. And he went to take a great big breath in to sing a big note and he sucked the microphone and he got hit at the back of the throat with a massive, massive load of disgusting old singer spit dust. Sophia looks like she's gonna throw up. So we now have a lovely flat, freshly sanded fretboard and fret slots that are plenty deep enough to take our tangs. Now, a couple of takeaways from that. You might as well, sorry, you might have seen me uh, just run over with a 400 at the end. That was mainly for the, um, for the inlays. I didn't want any 320 scratches on the inlays. Uh, but I ran it over the timber as well. Don't worry about misshaping the radius. You're not going to do that with a few strokes of 400. So, and don't listen to anyone who says you will, because they're being a fusspot. We also have triangle filed those fret slots. There was one thing I forgot to tell you. Uh, another reason for doing that is for potentially your future self or for any luthiers who come after you, those little channels will help prevent breakout when the next person pulls these frets out. So it's kind of a it's kind of a exercise in future etiquette for any luthiers coming after you. So let's move on to the next stage. Okay, so now we're on to the next stage of the process, which is to cut and install the frets. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna radius our fret wire. 
what we want is we want the fret wire to be slightly over radius. So a little bit more of a radius than the fretboard itself. This is so that we can get the edges to engage and then bend the top in to suit. Uh, if it's the other way, if you imagine you try and get it exactly the same as the actual fretboard radius, you might well get it slightly under and then what will happen is the ends will just bounce up, especially here where we're having to cut the tangs off of the ends because of the binding. So we really want that to be over radius so the edges stay down and we end up putting pressure on the middle with the uh, fret press. So we're gonna cut them all first. I've got this handy little thing. <laughs> I was trying to think what it was called, but it's not called anything, it's just a thing. We're gonna pop all of our frets in there. If you don't have one of these, then you can just lay out a bit of tape on the table. Every time you cut a fret, pop it on, pop it on, pop it on, and then you'll have all your frets laid out for you. Then we need a set of these. I'm not entirely sure who these are made by, but it might well be Hosco, but these are fret tang nips. They're gonna take off the tang, which is the little strip of metal with the barbs on that goes into the fret slot. They nip them off and it's worth spending money on these because if you get rubbish ones, you will have a stupidly boring time filing down and flipping round and just generally just asking about don't do it, just spend the money. Believe me, I've done it. Um, once we've done that and all the tangs have been nipped, then we can get to putting them into our neck. I'm gonna run some super glue, medium viscosity super glue, down through our lovely little channel which we've made with the file, and then I'm gonna hammer and press our frets in. Usually I dob a little bit of super glue on the ends of the frets which have no tangs, because they have no tangs, they have nothing to keep them down. So I like to pop a little bit of glue on there and press them and hold them until the glue is dry and that way I know they're not gonna pop up. Then we'll be on to the next stage. So let's get snipping. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but one more thing I like to do. After I've done the tangs, I'm just gonna put a little angle and basically nip these corners off. That way, if there is any buildup in the corners, those edges will not hit them. Okay, so just quickly, I've decided to use a hammer. It is a lot easier than trying to get this SG into a tiny little press and it's working just fine. It's definitely worth trying with the hammer first, I think, and seeing how it goes. And the ends are staying down, so that's what I'm worried about. And that's all good. Uh, the second thing is wear your goggles. You probably saw me put the goggles on and wondered maybe why I'm wearing goggles because I don't want super glue to splat into my eyes and make me blind. That is why, so do that, I recommend. Now I remember earlier I was saying that this neck had cracks in it and has obviously been repaired at least once. I'm starting to get a bit gentler with my hammer blows down here and 
I've had to support it because I don't want to accentuate those cracks. Uh, even if this thing has got five screws in it, I still am very worried about snapping this lovely neck off. So, careful times. Another tip, when you're applying the glue, pull towards you with the nozzle. Don't go away from yourself. It'll get stuck and it'll jar and bounce around and you'll have super glue all over your fretboard. So, get it in the channel or just above it and run it down and it'll keep itself in there. And if you do miss anything and have to go back up, then don't push it, dab it. Dab it where it needs to go. This is why guitar building will never be ASMR. Okay, what it looks like is it looks like the radius has changed it's slightly down here, so I need to be careful with these ends and make sure they're not popping. My frets are in, they're seated nicely, the glue is dry, that went really well. Fingers crossed, touch wood, never ever ever say that. The next stage is we're going to nip the ends off with our snips and then we're going to use our fret end file to instate a bevel on the edge of both sides of the neck. This is a tricky process on glue necks. It's hard not to knock into the body. We have to be really careful. We, all, we also want to be really, really mindful about any metal dust. So again, we're going to tape up, protect our entire guitar. And the other thing that I want to be really careful of is not having too shallow a bevel. We don't want our strings falling off the edge. So a nice steep bevel, um, but we need to follow the, the rounded edge that is already on our neck. So we're kind of bound to that. Let's get going and see how that goes. Oh, just remembered one more thing. You're going to get quite a rough finish with this. So what I tend to do is once I've got my bevel instated, I will run along with some sandpaper on a leveling beam to hit the ends of those frets so that they are sanded up to 320. That's then the same stage that all my frets will be sanded up to when I level them and I can go on to 400, 600, 800, 1200 and get all those ends and there won't be any nasty scratches on them. Now we're ready. Now normally when I'm snipping these I would come from the side, but seeing as I've got no fret tang to mush up and destroy my shape, I'm gonna come from the top like that, being very careful not to pull the fret up and out of its seat. Okay, fret ends are beveled. Just as a recap, we went over with the fret end file until we got close to the binding, not hitting the binding. And then ran over with a 320, and then ran over with a 400 leveling beam on the end just to get those frets back to where they needed to be. Where they need to be is, if you look directly down, I've made sure that the ends and I'll show you this in a minute. The ends of the frets, the bottom, are just shy of the edge of the binding. So hopefully you can see there that we've got a kind of very uniform frets all just shy of the binding. And that's it, we're done on that. Okay, so now we're on to the final process of the fretwork, which is something you will be very familiar with if you've been watching this channel recently, and that is level crown polish. I will, I'm still going to go into this because this is for people who want to know how to fret from beginning to end. So if you're bored of hearing about this, then uh, 
turn it down. <laughs> if you're not, stay involved. So level crown polish is the leveling of our frets and then the refining of their shape. When we level them, they get a nasty flat top. I say nasty, it's just, it's not, it's not great for sound. You can't have a string sat on a gigantic flat plateau. You want it to be a sharper, sharper point so that the intonation is good and so that the string doesn't buzz. So we level and then we crown to reinstate the fret and then we sort all the ends out and then we do our fret end filing which is where we get rid of all the sharps which I'll, I'll take you through in a minute because it, you need to be able to see what I'm talking about. And then we're on to polishing which is uh, the slightly laborious task of getting these sh frets shiny again. So let's start with our leveling. We're gonna mark them up the sharpie and then we're gonna level with a 320 grit on a leveling beam. We are running along the center line and then moving across but staying parallel to the center line. That means that we keep our radius. Let's go. Now, what I'm hoping you can see here is that we've hit the vast majority of the tops of our frets. Um, we have a fret here, which has just been hit, but not quite enough. We have a fret here, which has barely been hit at all. And we also have one at the top here, the first fret, which still has an end that hasn't been hit in a satisfactory manner. There's a couple more, so I'm gonna keep on going. Make sure your neck is really nicely supported when you do this. Right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna check where my pen is still there, but it's been scratched, because I don't wanna take the frets down any lower. I'm just gonna check it with the fret rocker. And if they're not rocking, then I'm happy. So the way we do that is we we span over three frets and we see if we've got rock. We do, we do have a bit of rock there. Oh, it's hardly anything, but it's enough. It's enough to make me worry. And there we have a fair bit and that's no good. So, so let's keep going. Okay, that rock is now gone. It's really tempting to see that the pen has been scuffed and to leave it, but you must check it with the fret rocker. Sometimes it's fine, sometimes it's not, but always check and keep going until it is. Otherwise, buzz, buzz, buzz. Okay, so that's that process done. Let's get on. Okay, next stage is crowning. We have this great big flat top, as you can see. And we don't want a great big flat top. We want a small, refined top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this beautiful crowning file. I love this, this is a smooth one. It's not the smoothest we do, it's called the smooth. We do a fine and ultra fine as well. But I find that this one is just perfect for what I'm doing here. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna pop a bit of tape on this one just to show you. All I want to be doing is knocking off the edge of the plateau that I've created. Now, I want a very shallow angle. I see a lot of people doing this. It's not what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is get my nice shallow angle. And I'm just going to run back. Sorry, I'm going to run forward. I just felt that I hit it there. There it is. I can feel it, the whole neck shakes. So then I'm gonna do that on both sides. It's a very delicate process, very gentle. 
I'm going to get rid of my light because actually that makes it harder to see. If you're struggling to see, put a shadow, get it into shadow, you'll see what you're dealing with. And so I can see there, I hope you can too, but I now have a much thinner line along the top. It's not quite thin enough for my liking. But the point is, is that it's central. That will help with our intonation. You also want this line to be consistently thick or thin, and you need it to be central. They're the things that you're looking for. That is about right, about a millimeter. So I'm just gonna do that on the rest of them. Okay, now everything is crowned. We need to do the prep work on the ends. So what we have is a very nasty spiky bit at the bottom here, and then we have the crest that runs up here, the crest of the bevel, which also needs softening. And we have these files here, which have two sides to them. They have a flat side here and a rounded side there. Now to get rid of the first edge, we use the flat side. And to get rid of the second crest, we use the rounded side show you how that's done. So very simple to remember. Flat side, up against our fret, we go 45 degrees, 45 degrees, and then making sure that that is pushed in there, no downward pressure, just a little pressure that way, but not a lot. We just run down, and then just flick that off. That's it. That's all we need to do. So for the crest, what we do is we flip that file onto the rounded side. Same again, we go right up and then we go 45 degree, but this time we run down parallel to that fret. But as we run down, we roll the file over. We just let it collapse. So make sure that it stays parallel to the fret. That's it. That's all you need to do. No shaping, just those two things on every single fret. Okay, so those fret ends are now done. That is all we need to do, those two motions. So flat side up to the fret, 45 degree, 45 degree down and flick. Round side up to the fret, 45 degree, parallel down and collapse the file over the top of the crest. That's it, no filing round. We're not making like barrel ended frets here or bullet ended frets. We're just getting the sharp bits off. Next stage, polishing. Okay, so polishing. Now this is possibly the most kind of laborious part of this entire process. It can really hurt your hand. It's long, it is a bit boring and you really need to do it well because otherwise it'll show up. But the good news is I have a new tool for you. So first of all, I'm gonna scrape my fretboard. Uh, obviously don't just go and scrape your fretboard if it's a uh, a maple fretboard that, that has any kind of coating on it, that would be bad. Uh, but we have a rosewood fretboard, so ro rosewood ebony. Scrape it, get any of the guff off. If you've had any stray hammer blows, then you can, if they're too big, you might want to steam them first. But any scratches and scrapes, you can get rid of them now. And now is a good time to do it because if you accidentally go over a polished fret with the knife and you're gonna put a mark in it. We don't want that. So um, scraping, da -da 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 -da, get that nice and clean. And then we're gonna move on to our polishing. Now we're gonna go, because I used a fine file or a smooth file, this guy, which is why I highly recommend you buy one. We do sell them here. I don't need to go any lower than 400 to start with. 400 will get my, will get my scratches out. Um, if you remember the top was 320. 
So I'm gonna start straight on 400. I'm gonna go four, six, eight. I'm gonna have a look at them. I might go to 12, but honestly, I might just take it straight to the buffing wheel at that point and let the buffing compound do the work. Now, we'll talk about technique, but I have this. Now, this is my favorite new thing in the world. I wanna cuddle Ben for inventing this because my hands were starting to really hurt from rubbing, rubbing, rubbing. And it always, to me, just felt very imprecise. You didn't quite know where you were getting the fret. It was just like, yeah, it was just annoying. It was just difficult and it, and it was slower. This thing is amazing. It's got some like neoprene on the bottom and it's basically just a little fret file handle with some neoprene on the bottom. It's pretty simple. But what we do is we get a bit of a sandpaper and we tape a bit on. Importantly, I make sure the tape goes right down to the bottom so that the tape doesn't degrade our masking tape, which will be covering up the fretboard, because that was always something that really annoyed me. You just, every time you did a fret, you have to put more masking tape on, and it was just a drag. If you put masking tape over the paper here, then you don't have to do that. So then when it's taped up, we'll then mark the top of the fret. You won't have to because it's done already, but you will subsequently. And then you're just gonna rub over from the very edge all the way to the top, and what you're doing is you're essentially re-crowning because you, are, you can make that line nice and thin on the top from both sides. Make sure to just whip round the edges and just soften off those crests a little bit. You work all the way down and then, now this might be a bit controversial, but it's the only way that I can think of of safely getting our entire fret polished. I'm then going to go over the top of each fret very gently between five and ten times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Same on every single one, exactly the same amount of pressure, okay, as in like no pressure. That way you shouldn't knock anything out of balance. You shouldn't knock away your lovely straight flat fretboard at all. should be fine. And then every time you come back to do your Next round of paper, you're going to put the pen over the top and you're going to re-crown. Now that is why it's so important to get these centered because we, we need to go to the center every single time. Okay, so you've got to be spot on with your centers. Once we've done that, we'll take it over to the buffing wheel. If you don't have a buffing wheel at home, you can use buffing compound. Um, we sell this, which is awesome. And this will bring them up to a beautiful shine. If you don't have a buffing wheel, Take it up to 1200, maybe even take it up to 15. Uh, 1200 should be okay. But then this compound will, will see you right. So that's it. Scrape, tape, polish, buff. Done. This is when I get any glue off, guys. Any glue that's overspilled. Now's the time. Okay, so as you may have noticed from my bespectacledness, I have been at the buffing wheel. So we're ready to do a final polish. Now, it's not strictly necessary, but I find it a really nice way to do this. These frets need cleaning off anyway after the buffing wheel, so I think that why not just give them one final buff and polish whilst you're doing that at the same time. So, yeah, using this green stuff, I'm going to buff them up one last time. Get out,
right along the yeah. inside. So there you have it guys, full refret, and I hope you can see that. That looks pretty damn good to me. Feels nice, nice on the edges. I think we've restored this little beauty. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment as you do, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.